Welcome and thank you for standing by. I would like to inform all participants that your lines have been placed on a listen-only mode until the question and answer session of today's call. Today's call is being recorded. If anyone has any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn the call over to Ryan Burson. Thank you. You may begin. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning to those of you on, on the West Coast. As stated by our operator, my name is Ryan Burson. I'm a demographer statistician in the popula population division at the Census Bureau. And I'm Mary McKay, and I'm a survey statistician in the American Community Survey Office. We want to thank you for attending today's presentation comparing the American Community Survey, or ACS, and the Population Estimates Program, or PEP. Hopefully, we can engage you and deepen your understanding of the ACS and PEP. As noted, today's webinar is being recorded, and materials, including the slides and recording, will be available through Census Academy in the recorded webinar section. The slides and transcript will also be available at the URL listed at the bottom of this slide. Before we focus on the ACS and PEP, let's start with an overview about the U.S. Census Bureau. The Census Bureau is the largest of 17 primary federal government statistical agencies. During the decennial census, which we just completed again in 2020, it is the second largest employer in the United States. When you hear the U.S. Census Bureau, more often than not, you may think of that decennial census or the census of population and housing every 10 years. But the Bureau also conducts more than 100 censuses and surveys of households and businesses across the nation each year. This includes the American Community Survey and over 30 other household surveys. Another important program at the Census Bureau is the Population Estimates Program. It disseminates annual estimates of the population and housing units for the United States, states, counties, cities and towns, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico and its municipios, and metropolitan and micropolitan statistical areas. The Census Bureau's mission is to serve as the nation's leading provider of quality data about its people and economy. And our goal is to provide the best mix of timeliness, relevancy, quality, and cost for the data we collect and the services we provide. If you'd like to know more about the Census Bureau, please visit www.census.gov and explore the About Us tab. Today we will go through a few things. The first part of today's webinar, I will be going over the basics of the American Community Survey, including the history, how data are collected, topics and geographies included, and tools to access. Next, Ryan will go over the basics of the Population Estimates Program, including a summary of what estimates the program disseminates, how the estimates are made, also when and where you can access them. Then we will share similarities and differences in the estimates released by our areas, followed by a general overview of when to use what with some examples. And finally, before questions, Ryan and I will cover some resources available for learning more about the ACS and PEP and how to engage with us. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to use the chat feature on WebEx. We will do our best to answer them in the chat or bring them up during the question portion at the end. To begin, the ACS is on the leading edge of survey design, continuous improvement, and data quality. It is the nation's most current, reliable, and accessible data source for local statistics on critical planning topics. The survey samples approximately 3.5 million addresses each year. These data are collected continuously throughout the year to produce annual social, economic, housing, and demographic estimates. The data collected through ACS, along with other census programs such as PET, are used to help inform over 600 and $75 billion of federal government spending each year. Our estimates, covering more than 40 topics, support more than 300 known federal uses and countless non-federal uses. Examples of some programs that use Census Bureau data to determine funding include the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, 
the Department of Housing and Urban Development's Public Housing Capital Fund, and the Department of Transportation's Highway Planning and Construction, just to name a few. The Census Bureau releases three different sets of data estimates from the ACS each year in the form of one-year and five-year period data sets, as well as one-year supplemental estimates. In order to understand what the ACS is and why it exists, we need to discuss a bit of census history. The first census of the United States was conducted in 1790 and occurred every 10 years with one form being used to collect data from all households until 1930. From 1940 to 2000, the decennial census, which is the name for the census conducted every 10 years, contained a short form used to collect data from all households and a long form that was used to collect data from a sample of households. The long form approach worked well initially, but the data became less and less current as the decade progressed after each decennial census. In the early 1990s, demand from a wide variety of users for current, nationally consistent data led federal government policymakers to consider the feasibility of collecting social, economic, and housing data continuously throughout the decade. In 2000, a large-scale demonstration of the American Community Survey was conducted. The ACS was then fully implemented in 2005 and began collecting data for all of America's communities each year. There is also the Puerto Rico Community Survey, which is the equivalent of the ACS in Puerto Rico. In 2010 and moving forward, the decennial census is only a short form sent to all households because the ACS now collects information each year that was once collected by the long form each decade. You may be wondering, well, what method does the Census Bureau use to collect ACS data? The American Community Survey data collection operation uses three modes that take place over a three-month period, internet, mail, and personal visit. For most housing units, the first phase of data collection includes an invitation for the household to respond via internet, which is mailed to the sample address. Internet data collection started in 2013. If the household does not respond via internet, a paper questionnaire is sent to the sample address for the household to complete and return by mail. If the Census Bureau is unable to reach an occupant of the address via internet paper questionnaire, or the unit had an unmailable address, the address may be selected for computer-assisted personal interviewing, known as CAPI. At any point in this process, receipt of an internet response or a completed paper questionnaire from the sampled address results in the address being removed from the data collection workload. Also, respondents are always able to call the telephone questionnaire assistance line at any point during the three-month data collection cycle if they have questions about the survey or prefer to complete the survey over the phone. The content collected by the American Community Survey can be grouped into four main types of characteristics, social, demographic, economic, and housing. Social characteristics include topics such as education, marital status, fertility, veterans, disability status, place of birth, and others. The American Community Survey also collects basic demographic characteristics such as sex, age, race, and Hispanic origin. This is the same information collected on the decennial census. Economic characteristics include such topics as employment status, income, commuting to work, occupation, industry, health insurance, and others. And housing characteristics include topics such as tenure, information about occupancy, and the structure itself, which includes home value, housing costs such as mortgages, taxes and insurance, utilities, plumbing or kitchen facilities, and others. Each question on the ACS is used for federal and state government programs. These topics are used to produce more than 1,000 tables for local communities. The ACS provides data for more geographies on an annual basis than any other household survey. The image on this slide shows some of the geographies for which ACS data are produced and the relationship between them. Lower geographic areas fit neatly within larger areas directly connected with lines. For example, school, congressional, and state legislative districts fit neatly within states and do not cross state boundaries. However, they may cross boundaries of counties or metropolitan areas. In this visualization, you can also see the smallest geographic building block is the block group. 
The ACS's unique ability to report on a wide range of geographies is what gives it such a broad appeal. Now getting back to the ACS data products I referenced earlier, these products are released about one year after the data are collected. The first year of data collection with a full sample was in 2005. We plan to release the 2020 ACS one-year estimates in September 2021. ACS one-year estimates, which combine data collected over 12 months, are available for geographic areas with a population of 65,000 or more. ACS one-year supplemental estimates are a subset of detailed tables that are available for geographic areas with populations of 20,000 or more. They are simplified versions of popular ACS tables and provide the most current data to almost twice as many geographies as compared to the standard one-year release. We plan to release the one-year supplemental estimates for 2020 in October 2021. And finally, ACS five-year estimates which combine data collected over 60 months, are available for geographic areas of all sizes down to the census tract and block group level. We plan to release the 2016-2020 ACS five-year estimates in December 2021. We cater to a variety of data users, just like you, with unique needs. So we have a variety of data access tools. This is a list of a few of those tools. I will describe two. QuickFacts and data.census.gov in more detail in the next two slides. All data tools are available from census.gov. Choose the Explore Data tab from the blue ribbon at the top of the screen, then click on the Data Tools and Apps tab to view a comprehensive list of census tools and apps. QuickFacts is a quick, easy way to access facts about people, business, and geography. Quick Facts provides statistics for all states, counties, cities, and towns with a population of 5,000 or more. It's great for making quick comparisons between two geographies. It includes data from the ACS, PEP, as well as other Census Bureau programs. Some topics you can compare are population, age and sex, housing, health, economy, transportation, business, and others. You can compare up to five geographies at once. Data.census.gov is the Census Bureau's main data dissemination system, and it is the primary way to access data from the American Community Survey, Decennial Census, and more, including PEP, which you will see shortly. The vision for data.census.gov is based on overwhelming feedback to streamline the way you get data and digital content from the Census Bureau. Since 2016, we have made data.census.gov available as a public site while continuously releasing new improvements every few months based on user feedback. These updates will continue as we are committed to giving you the functionality you want and need in a dissemination system. To learn more, please visit the links at the bottom of the slide. While we're talking about ways to access data through data tools, it's helpful to know more about the types of data products available in the ACS. The data products fall broadly into two categories, profiles or tables. The letters in parentheses next to the profile and table types, as you can see here on this slide, which will discuss data profiles, and the next slide, which will cover data tables, correspond to the beginning of the table ID. First, let's focus on data profiles. They offer a broad look at a community's social, economic, housing, and demographic characteristics. They generally include many different variables, and the geography or population group is at the center. The ACS includes the following types of profiles. Data profiles, which provide broad social, economic, housing, and demographic profiles. Comparison profiles, that offer comparisons of data profile estimates across ACS years. And selected population profiles, which provide broad social, economic, and housing profiles for a large number of race, ethnic, ancestry, and country or region of birth groups. Tables are the other type of data product available in the ACS. Tables provide a precise or detailed view of a subject, and the subject matter is at the center of the table. Some examples of tables included by the ACS are detail tables, which provide access to the most detailed ACS data down to the block group and cross tabulations of ACS variables, 
supplemental tables, which are simplified tables that provide ACS statistics at a lower population threshold than the standard one-year data table, and subject tables, which are similar to data profiles but include more detailed ACS data classified by subject. I am now going to turn it over to Ryan to go over the Population Estimates Program. Thank you, Mary. I'd like to provide now an, an overview of some of the basics of the Population Estimates Program for you. The Population Estimates Program disseminates official measures of population and housing units between the decennial censuses. The estimates are mandated by federal law and along with other census programs such as the ACS, as Mary pointed out, are used to allocate over $675 billion in federal government spending each year. Recently, the estimates from the Population Estimates Program were used to distribute over $100 billion to states and cities for the 2020 CARES Act. The estimates include basic population and housing topics supporting the ACS and other federal surveys in the form of population controls and denominators for rates, uh, for academic and business research, and of course for program planning in the public and private sectors. Our most current estimates are for July 2020. And we have historical estimates extending back to 1900 for some areas. Ongoing data releases occur annually for over 80,000 areas in the United States and Puerto Rico. The range of PEP estimates is considerably less than that disseminated by the ACS. PEP estimates are given for demographic and housing subjects, but do not include social and economic subjects. With regard to population data, PEP disseminates demographic estimates for total population and population characteristics, including age, Hispanic origin, race, and sex. Also, components. These include births, deaths, and net migration. Also, group quarters population totals. PEP also disseminates total population for what we call universes. These include the resident population, the resident population plus armed forces overseas, the civilian population, the civilian non-institutionalized population, and the household population. With regard to housing data, PEP disseminates estimates of total housing units only. There are no housing characteristics. Here are the geographies for which PEP data are disseminated and the hierarchical relationship uh, between them. Most of the estimates are for legal entities like states and counties and incorporated places but we also disseminate estimates for metropolitan and micropolitan statistical areas. Estimates are disseminated by the Population Estimates Program annually for over 40,000 incorporated places in minor civil division. There are also estimates for the unincorporated parts of counties. This table summarizes all of our estimate pr products by geography and type. The levels of available estimate geography are listed in the columns across the top, and the available demographic types of estimates are listed in the rows down the side. Reviewing the table, we see that total resident population estimates are disseminated for the U.S states, metropolitan and micropolitan statistical areas, counties, places, and Puerto Rico and its municipios. Note that we use the, word, the term places 
to include incorporated places and minor civil divisions, which we also sometimes term as sub-county areas. Components of change, that is births, deaths, and net migration are disseminated for all of these areas except for places and municipios. Age, sex, race, and Hispanic origin characteristics estimates are disseminated for all areas except metro and micro areas and places. Note that characteristics estimates for Puerto Rico are given only by age and sex and do not include uh, the other demographic characteristics. Monthly estimates for the five estimates universes that I just mentioned are disseminated for the U.S. only. Housing unit estimates are disseminated for the United States, states, and counties. This may seem a little bit daunting, but I think it's a very important to illustrate that our, our population estimates program estimates are actually created through uh, the use of administrative data and estimates models and are not, not collected per se. The methods we use to create the estimates vary by level of geography. For national, state, and county estimates, we use the, what we call the cohort component method. The population estimate any, at any given time starts with a population base. It could be the last decennial census or the previous point in the time series. Births are added and deaths are subtracted. Then net migration is added, and that would include both international and domestic net migration. Birth and death records are supplied each year by the National Center for Health Statistics and by our partners in the Federal State Cooperative for Population Estimates. Net international migration is estimated using data from the ACS, the Puerto Rico Community Survey, and the Defense Manpower Data Center. Net domestic migration is factored in by incorporating data from the Internal Revenue Service, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the Social Security Administration, the ACS, and our estimates cooperative partners. Now, for sub-county population estimates, we use what we call a, is a distributive housing unit method, where county population is distributed to sub-county areas based on updated estimates of housing units. We multiply housing occupancy rates and persons per household rates times updated estimates of the housing units for sub-county areas to produce uncontrolled population estimates. We then control these sub-county estimates so that they sum to the county household population estimates produced with the cohort component method. To produce the final sub-county population estimates, we add the controlled household population estimates to estimates of the total group porter's population. Input data for the housing unit estimates come from the Census Bureau's Building Permit Survey, the Survey of Construction, the Manufactured Home Survey, and from our Estimates Cooperative Partners. Each year, HEP disseminates a new set of what we call vintage estimates. The estimates are released on a rolling basis beginning in December and ending in June of the following year. This table shows our vintage 2020 estimate release schedule by type of product. The first vintage 2020 estimates of total and voting age population for the nation and states were released last December. Upcoming releases include in early May, we will release the total population and components of change estimates for the nation, states, counties, the Puerto Rico Commonwealth, and municipios, and also for metropolitan, micropolitan statistical areas. Also in early May, uh, we will release a special uh, data set that includes the population 
uh, for the United States by single year of age up to 100 and over, and also by sex. Later in May, we will come out and disseminate total population estimates for cities and towns, that is, incorporated places and minor civil divisions. Also at that time, we will disseminate total estimates of total housing unit, units for the nation, states, and county. In June, we have a very large release. We'll disseminate population by age, sex, race, and Hispanic origin for the nation, states, and all of its counties. In addition, we'll release population estimates by age and sex for Puerto Rico, Commonwealth, and its municipios. Now, at the end of each decade, when decennial census information is released, PEP has the opportunity to evaluate its estimates against the census. And that is what we'll do with the 2020 census. We will use our estimates methods to create April 1, 2020 estimates without knowledge of the 2020 census results, and then compare the estimates against the census results. The evaluation estimates are published in the research and evaluation area of the PEP webpage, which is given here. As 2020 results become available, we will follow up with additional, additional evaluation estimates, evaluation products later this year and into next year. Like ACS, PEP also caters to a variety of data users with unique needs. So we have a variety of data access tools as well. This is a list of those tools. Uh, the PEP webpage highlighted here is the primary way to access all of PEP's estimates products, including a large array of historical estimates, publications, and media reports. Since the only vintage 2020 estimates available right now are population totals for the United States and states, you can access vintage 2019 estimates for other areas here. Mary mentioned data.census.gov, the Census Bureau's main dissemination platform. This platform is not yet the primary way to access PEP data, but we have begun to post vintage 2019 estimates here. PEP estimates are all also are available on QuickFacts, as Mary described. And PEP estimates are also available on the Application Programming Interface, or API. It lets developers create custom apps to reach new users and makes key demographic, socioeconomic, and housing statistics more accessible than ever before. PEP estimates on the API extend back to 1990. Recently, we were able to make our first release of vintage 2019 estimates on data.census.gov. At this time, the only PEP estimates available on the site are of total resident population, but these estimates are, are, are on the site and they're available for all of our estimates geographies. We are currently working with the Census Bureau Center for Enterprise Dissemination to post our other Vintage 2019 estimates products on data.census.gov. Now let's go over some of the similarities and differences between the ACS and PEP. Thanks, Ryan. Hopefully from the introduction of both Census Bureau programs, you are starting to see where there are similarities and differences. There are many ways where the ACS and PEP are different. For example, the ACS provides estimates from samples collected every year, whereas PEP provides annual estimates of current population and total housing units by calculating change since the last census. Further, the ACS collects data on numerous social, economic, housing, and demographic characteristics, whereas PEP does not collect survey data to create estimates but rather it uses administrative records and other data sources to calculate annual change in population and housing. The content for the ACS includes population and housing characteristics. 
but the PEP has no social or economic detail and only has population characteristics by age, Hispanic origin, race, and sex only, as well as housing unit totals. Both the ACS and PAP release new data every year, but the ACS data reflect two different time periods, one year and five year. And PAP data reflects specific points in time, typically on July 1 each year. PEP data also reflect estimate intervals such as months, years, and decades, chiefly for the components estimates. There are other differences. The ACS releases data across numerous geographies. First, one-year estimates for populations of 65,000 or more. And second, five-year estimates going down to the block group level. PEP has data down to the place level only, although we do also uh, just many estimates for metropolitan and micropolitan statistical areas. Finally, the ACS calculates a margin of error at the 90% confidence level, but no statistical confidence intervals or averages for time periods are calculated for PEP. While they are different in many ways, the ACS and PEP share some similarities. In fact, the two programs often work together to produce estimates, both to disseminate total population and housing unit estimates, also population characteristics by age, Hispanic origin, race, and sex. One important area where these two programs work together involves certain ACS estimates. The PEP estimates are actually used as controls for ACS population and housing unit data. The so one-year estimates for larger areas are consistent. You will see this when you are using data.census.gov. If you see five asterisks in the margins of error column, as you see indicated here in this table, that is an indication that the estimate has used population estimates, or PEP, as a control. Now let's walk through some basic rules for when to use what. Both the ACS and PEP are useful for different reasons and for different purposes. If you want to examine population totals and demographic characteristics, generally speaking, you would use PEP. For social and economic characteristics, use the ACS. For estimate percents, means, medians, and rates, use PEP estimates unless you intend to use these measures in, comp in comparison with social and or economic estimates from the ACS. If you want to conduct, conduct statistical tests to compare estimates between two time periods or for similar geographies, use the ACS. And if you want to collect a mixture of estimates, we recommend using either the ACS or the PEP. For example, if you just want to discuss population or housing totals for the state of Michigan, you can use PEP. However, if you want to also discuss income, educational attainment, or other economic and social characteristics in addition to the population and housing totals for Michigan, you should use all ACS estimates. We put together some examples to show you applied uses of the ACS and PEP. If you want to use a, a population total, use PEP. Likewise, population by age and sex for a state at a point in time, for example, the number of children under age one in Delaware on July 1, 2019, PEP estimates are what you should use. What about if you want the population by age and sex for educational attainment for a state? For example, you're curious about these estimates in 2019 for the state of Ohio. Use the ACS, and more specifically, if you're interested in the most current data, use the one-year estimates, but if you want precision, use the five-year estimates. If you want an estimate of income, such as the mean household income for a small geography, such as a town, or any area with a population of less than 65,000, such as a smaller county or place, use the ACS five-year estimate. 
If you want to compare the mean household income in a small place to its respective county, use the ACS five-year estimate. The county may have data available for the one-year estimate if it meets the population threshold, but the small geography might not. So you should use the same data product for both figures to compare. Similarly, if you want to compare the difference in married couple families in the same county between two time periods, Make sure you use the same ACS data product, that is, comparing the one year with the one year or five year with five year. We hope you've enjoyed our presentation comparing the ACS and PEP. We wanted to finally share some resources for learning more about both before opening the floor for questions. For the American Community Survey, a great place to start to learn more is the ACS main webpage which can be found at census.gov forward slash ACS. The American Community Survey website contains a lot of information about the survey, data products, tools for data users, and other helpful information. If you're interested in accessing the materials from this webinar, visit the News and Updates tab along the left side and navigate through events to find today's presentation. To learn more about the Population Estimates Program, start with the main PEP webpage. Here you can access all of PEP's estimates products, including a large array of historical estimates, method statements, publications, and media reports. You can also find information about our partners in the Federal State Cooperative for Population Estimates, who can help to provide insights into local demographic trends in their states. As we wrap up, we encourage you to connect with us directly. You can sign up for and manage email alerts on various census topics and updates via GovDelivery. Also, sign up if you want the slides from this presentation or any other presentations we provide. We'll send out a message when materials are available. You can visit our websites, census.gov forward slash ACS or census.gov forward slash POPEST or connect on the various social media platforms. We also have emails to help support data users who may have question, questions. acs.users.support at census.gov for the ACS and pop.cdob at census.gov for PEP. And one last thing before we open the line for questions. If you're using our estimates, make sure to source the Census Bureau, American Community Survey, or Population Estimates as to where you receive the data. It helps people know that the information they're using is powered by the Census Bureau and its program. This concludes today's presentation on comparing the American Community Survey and population estimates. Mary and I thank you for attending and having an interest in the important data the Census Bureau collects and disseminates. We will now open the floor for questions. Operator, do we have some questions on the line? Thank you. We will now begin our question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1. Please unmute your phone and record your name slowly and clearly when prompted. Your name is required to introduce your question. One moment, please. Our first question, your line is open. Oh, um, good afternoon. Um, I thought I heard you say that you get, um, for, uh, for PEP, that you get um, information from uh, Defense Manpower Defense Manpower Data Center, and um, I just I was wondering what type of data do you get? Do you get uh, demographic data, and how often do you get it? Is that oh, thank you. That's a good that's a good question. This is Ryan, and uh, I'll answer that. The yes, we do get demographic uh, information from them, and it involves, of course, the military population. Uh, we get uh, annual, in fact, monthly data uh, on an annual basis. Um, we use that information uh, to estimate the, the, the military movement internationally from overseas to the United States. So we can add those movements um, uh, to our net international migration estimate. 
Okay, thank you for that. The reason why I was asking is because we were trying to get census data, um, administrative data to do the 2020 census, and we had a lot of problems. Okay, yeah, so maybe. Um, I understand <laughs> that there may be a public access um, uh, site at the Defense Manpower Data Center to for the general public to access uh, those data. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, and as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star one. One moment. Your line is open. Thank you. I placed this uh, question on the chat box, some, but perhaps we get a little bit more discussion uh, of the question. Um, we, I think everyone is uh, aware that the uh, census data for 2020 will not be available for state and local governments until September of this year, uh, you know, a few months late. Um, it takes time to uh, build consensus uh, amongst elected officials and community leaders in the redistricting process. Uh, some states require local governments to uh, complete the redistricting process during the odd-numbered year when the 2020 census, for example, was released. And so my question is, uh, is population data, uh, age, race, um, sex, Hispanic origin, those sorts of things, either from the ACS or the PEP, um, sufficiently accurate um, for the this 2021 process. Uh, and if if the if the if that type of data is not yet available in in this year for 2020, perhaps the 2019 data would be available. Yes, this is uh, Mark Asiala. I'm the um, uh, the assistant division chief in charge of the statistical design for the ACS. And um, I just wanted to say that the redistricting data um, is due to be released from the 2020 census, the PL94-171 data by September 30th. Um, that data comes out at the block level uh, that is fairly detailed and is more detailed uh, geographically than what you could expect from a survey like the ACS. So um, we would continue to recommend using the official product for that. Um, there is a uh, uh, citizens of voting age uh, population file that the ACS produces on an annual basis. That was released February 1st, but that goes down to tract and block group only and is used uh, mainly for evaluation and enforcement purposes. And this is Ryan from the PEP program, and uh, I would echo what Mark just said. And, and in fact, for PEP estimates, uh, uh, even even for Vintage 2020, they extend down geographically only to the place level. And I think that most uh, states, if, if not all states and other jurisdictions, require more detailed geographical geographical information in their laws to, to redraw districts. And at this time, we have no further questions on the audio line. This is Mark Asiala. I had seen a number of questions regarding the use of the population estimates uh, in combination with the ACS, um, can I address a, uh, a general response for people to that? Um, so the way how we produce estimates from the ACS is we initially um, ass assign a weight that reflects the, um, the 
the chance or probability that a person is in sample. Um, and once we do that, we do a number of steps. We, that includes uh, adjustments for non-response and also adjustments for um, to what we call control the ACS estimates to the population estimates program. When we use the estimates um, from the PEP, we create our own um, race, Hispanic, age, and sex groups. Um, but because of um, sort of how many people we have in each of those groups, we may have to collapse some of them together. And so what you'll tend to see is that the ACS and the PEP, particularly on the one year, will tend to agree for total population and sometimes the um, uh, Hispanic, non-Hispanic split, but we tend not to agree uh, be on race, um, for example, there was a question about white alone population, and that's because when we form those groups, we take all Hispanics together, regardless of race, and then we break out the non-Hispanic race component, sorry, the non-Hispanic component out by race. So race groups themselves will tend to never be directly controlled, so you'll tend to see some differences when you compare the PEP and the ACS on that. There was also a question uh, with regard to looking at the five-year ACS versus the PEP. You should know that when we do this process for controlling the five-year estimates, we use the average of five years of the PEP. So, for example, the 2015 to 2019 um, ACS five-year product takes the average of the years 2015, 2016, and so on through 2019 population estimates. And so we use that average to be comparable to the period for which we collected the data. Um, so if you looked at just the 2019 one, uh, uh, PEP estimates, those would be different. So that explains some of the changes there. There were also a, um, a series of questions about what about for uh, the estimates that the ACS produces for uh, areas that the PEP does not produce estimates for. So, for example, ZICTAs or tracks. Since we ascribe a individual weight to every um, respondent that we get in the ACS, we form estimates by summing up the weights for all the people in a geographic area. So if we had 10 people in a zip code area or a tract, we will sum the weights of those 10 people, and that's how we come up with that estimate. The only place where the PEP plays a role is, let's, um, let's take, for example, tracks. All the tracks that come up into a county, we may control to a county total coming from the PEP, but how the individual tract level estimates will just come from the distribution in the ACS itself. So we'll agree where we make use of the PEP potentially on total population, but for other areas, it's really driven by the ECS. I hope that helps uh, some of your questions. Thank you. So it sounds like we have no further questions uh, on the phone. We had a very, very lively chat session. And Mary, if you can go back to the slide with our email addresses and contact info. Um, we encourage you, if you still have questions for us, we have our email addresses on there for ACS, our American Community Survey questions. You can reach out to us at acso.users.support at census.gov. And for POP Estimates Program, it's pop.cdob at census.gov. So if you still want to get in touch with us with your questions, please feel free to reach out and we'll follow up with you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. This is a very um, energetic and very active webinars. We thank you for, for joining us.
That concludes today's conference. Thank you for participating. You may disconnect at this time.